back to Between Two Wings. I'm your host, Jay Wiles. Today, I'm joined by Mark Hansen. He's flown more than 400 flights for some great organizations, donating his time and resources to helping others. Mark, thanks so much for being here. Oh, thanks. It's an honor to be here. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Uh, first, you know, we like to start just talking about our backgrounds, what we've got going on behind us. And for me, um, I know you're up in the Northeast. I decided to, to choose a, a picture from the one GA flight I've done up in the Northeast. This was with uh, my coworker, Brent. Uh, he lives in Portland and just took me up flying one day when I was up there on a work trip. And it was absolutely fantastic. Such a beautiful part of the country that you're in. Oh, great. Yeah, thank you. Um, doing a lot of the volunteer flights gives you an opportunity to fly to interesting places like, you know, Portland, yeah. Maine, Presque Isle, Maine, mm -hmm. and really up and down the East Coast. And you get scenes like this. It's it's really great. It is. It is. Tell us what you got going on behind you. Oh, uh, so this is uh, one of the passengers I fly fairly frequently from northern Maine to Boston for treatment. Uh, she's been going since she was a, an infant. Um, and a great story. They'd have to drive eight hours each way to get to treatment. Mom would probably have to take off two to three days worth of work. And this way, they sometimes don't, you know, miss a day. So it's it's yeah, very yeah. important, uh, you know, to help out these kind of people that are, have really no other choice because there's no scheduled service from Northern Maine to uh, to Boston. Absolutely, the, and that's you know you're here rep today representing the Air Care Alliance. Can you tell us about? that organization and uh, some examples of the organizations they advocate for? Sure. Air Care Alliance is a network of volunteer pilot organizations across the U.S. And volunteer pilot organizations do everything from medical flights to cargo flights to animal flights like animal rescue um, to turtles. I mean, that's one of my favorite stories. Um, and we go out uh, nationally and advocate for all these local organizations. A few of them are national, um, but the majority are regional organizations with volunteer pilots. Um, so it's it's fun going out and meeting new people in different parts of the country and and raising awareness. And it's really about raising awareness. Um, it's surprising how few pilots know that you, they can volunteer their time. Um, and equally for non-pilots, it's there's even fewer that understand that these uh, services are available. Absolutely. I'd love to talk about that in just a minute. First, I want I'd love to learn about your flying journey. How did you um, get into flying and how did you get connected with uh, charitable aviation? It's an interesting story. I, and I, uh, when the Great Recession hit in 2009, I was getting kind of uh, kind of bored. Uh, my clients weren't doing anything new. Uh, so uh, I started this uh, flying lesson. So it was on my bucket list. And I said, ah, uh, since I have nothing else to do, let's do it five to seven days a week. <laughs> so um, so I, I wrap. I just kept training and training and training. So I did. I started with zero hours in May of 2009, and within nine months had commercial instrument, single and multi done. That's uh, amazing. Bought an airplane in 2010, and same month of buying an airplane, got introduced to uh, public benefit flying or charitable aviation. Um, and started flying the plane locally. So initially it was only about half of my flying career, but um, or time. Um, and now it's about 95% of my time. That's amazing. Uh, so a lot of fun and, and good excuse to go places you'd never go. Yeah, absolutely. And it, I think it makes you also a much safer pilot because you're thinking about those that you're flying, their comfort, the comfort of the ride. So you're putting a lot more time and, and have discipline to put time into to really planning your flight well. Absolutely. Can you tell us about some of the uh, flights you have done? Just give us some examples. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it, it's really rewarding when you see some of them. But uh, one of my most favorite ones is this uh, little girl I met when she was a baby. Uh, her name is Piper. Uh, she had a congenital heart defect. Um and at eight months old, she was going in for her seventh open heart surgery. The parents um, had got the diagnosis uh, uh, before being born. So they knew that this was going to be needed, but they'd been living with this for several months without even knowing the service was available. And they also were driving over eight hours each way with an ill infant to get to care. So, um, I've been flying. So we got a call on a Tuesday to do a flight on a Wednesday. <laughs> you know, I I took the flight, um, you know, was surprised by three television stations meeting us and, you know, videotaping my landing, which luckily looked good that day. <laughs> <laughs> 
I had good center line discipline on the taxiway. So, um, so anyways, so I've, I've been flying them pretty regularly for six years now. And uh, it's just good to see the, you know, the great work that they getting to the right medical care can, can do for families like this all over the country. So um yeah, you know, and that's so that's one of the most memorable is just example of awareness at Boston Children's where they do know of the service, but somehow it's not resonating through the teams. Yeah. Um, most of the medical care facilities focus on what goes on inside their four walls, not what happens, you know, getting them to and from uh, medical care. So it's great to work with organizations that are facilitating that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you're, and, from everything I've heard, both from you and from others, you, you know, you're a great example to look up to when it comes to pilots. And I know you didn't mention it in our conversations, but you've received a lot of awards for giving your time and your resources to others. And it, it's amazing. You you also are helping to try to get so many more pilots involved, too. Like that is that's amazing. The awards are icing on the cake, but for me, it's more about, well, when I get an award, that means I can build more awareness. And really, that's the mission right now. Air Care Alliance, you know, we're out there advocating for our members. Our members just need more awareness. So it's awareness to pilots and awareness to those in the medical community, those in, even in disaster relief. I mean, there's a, yeah. a big animal need typically in disaster relief. The animals get left behind. So um, definitely. So again, there's... You know, it, it, I and I, I, you know, I do get choked up every now and then talking about kind of the, you know, this stuff. Um, but once you start giving, you realize that just the act of giving, the goodwill aspect of it, really improves the lives of the people that you're moving around, um, and and even animals. I mean, they're very, you know, they're sometimes you know yeah. about as appreciative as you can get. But people in particular. They just can't believe that someone's donating this much time and cost mm -hmm. into getting them to their medical care. It just doesn't, yeah. you know, happen elsewhere. It seems like in the medical community. So, absolutely. I, again, can't describe how you know. And when I, I try very, very often to take pilots who have not done a, a donated flight yet as co-pilot, and it's fun to put them in jet, but it's also. Um, fun to get them exposed because usually that's the hook <laughs> you know, as soon as they <laughs> they see you know an adult or a child that's super appreciative and uh yeah yeah it, it's it's very good all during the last eight years ago i've used uh, cirrus sr 22s as backups and th that's an example of most common airplane and public benefit flying or charitable aviation single engine piston planes you know they do the workload um yeah. and it's and, and the people are equally appreciative if they're in a jet or in a, you know, a Cirrus. There's even a 150 that flies into Boston Logan. <laughs> you know? That's so, incredible. <laughs> that's got to be so, an interesting sight. Well, and that's the other part of this is everybody in this in the NAS it, is health. Everyone collaborates. Um, air traffic control, you get the pilots can get a unique call sign. Air traffic control isn't supposed to give you any preferential treatment, but <laughs> let's say sometimes it may happen. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's, you know, it, it's funny. And, you know, if you mention you're flying turtles, mm -hmm. you're the, the professional pilots, you know, with you up in the flight levels, they're making uh, jokes about how slow you're going or all that <laughs> stuff. So it's, it's, That's it's funny. funny. I was going to ask, tell, tell me more about the turtles. Uh, the, the Turtles, uh, there's a, an interesting organization called Turtles Fly 2. And for some reason, they get as much, if not more, attention than the, the medical flights. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, we I get more questions about turtles, just like you're asking now. Yeah. So, um, camp turtles are endangered, and they come to the Northeast, and they forget to go south. Oh, wow. So, every year, a, a large number of them wash up on the beaches of Cape Cod, Massachusetts, and other places. Oh, wow. uh, they get rescued, stabilized, and thrown in general fusion airplanes and flown south. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, That's uh, crazy. One, my first flight, I took literally all the seats out of the Eclipse and filled it floor to ceiling with uh, banana boxes. They use banana boxes from the grocery store. Wow. And you put one or two turtles in each one. So we, I think that that trip, we transported 38 turtles to uh, wow. SeaWorld in Orlando. That's funny. So oh, my goodness. 
Yeah, the good news is they don't whine or anything like dogs or anything. <laughs> I was about to say it would have been a really quiet flight. It was a very quiet flight. So, <laughs> and they all survived, which is the most important thing for me. Yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to be known as that <laughs> guy. So exactly. Uh, but and I mean the same thing with human flight too. I mean you're you're dealing with people that are in various states of health, and you know you want to make sure they have a good flight. Um, and they all have to be ambulatory. Meaning, meaning there's a medical uh, release that is signed that they're stable enough to fly in a general aviation plane. So um, so that's that's important. We don't want pilots to have get their itis. Um, yeah, and, absolutely. And the good news is, is in general, the, the volunteer pilot organizations are a very safe community. Uh, everyone is going out of their way to make sure that they're attending to the safety of flight. Yeah. You, you were talking to me in our conversations before about how safety is just such a major focus of everything you're doing, whether it's no matter the flight. No, it, and it, it, it is definitely a big deal. Um, everyone he has, uh, and just about everyone has safety committees. If you want, I can go into pilot qualifications as well. Yeah, go for it. Um, and, and that varies. Um, it's kind of interesting. Um, some of the animal organizations require an instrument uh, rating, and uh, and then some of the human ones don't. <laughs> you know, so, um, but um, you know, it really is depends on where you are in the country. So if you're flying in the Northeast, where the weather can change in about two seconds. Most all the volunteer organizations up here require an instrument rating. Um, and the, the minimum number of hours as PAC is in the 250 to 350 range. And if you're flying a turbine, usually it's around 500 hours. So, um, but in the rest of the country, it could be 250 hours in a private license. And that's good enough. Yeah. So it's, and, and it doesn't matter if you fly once a year or, you know, 50 to 100 times a year you know it's yeah. it's it's really whatever you're comfortable with each flight makes a difference absolutely you know mark you've talked about both people not knowing that this resource is there and about the need for pilots i i struggle to comprehend how big the need is for those that do know about it can you talk a little bit to that there's two aspects to it but the biggest one is how large is the the need nationally mm -hmm. And there's a, a number that gets discussed and whether it's plus or minus 50%, who knows, but that 30 million Americans live more than hundred miles from the care that they actually need. Um, and so specialized care is getting more and more rare. Mm -hmm. um, so you may, you know, you may be like, uh, you may be in Boston where there's great medical care, but your specialist is in Baltimore. You know, for your niche of cancer or for your cancer trial. Um, and if you're a burn patient, we, we fly a lot of Shriners patients. Um, they have to go for graphing because the graphs don't grow with them. So, oh, wow. um, or if you have one of the heart defects, this baby that I mentioned before, baby Piper, who's longer a baby, um, you know, heart valves don't grow that they artificial that they put in at early age. So she just had another heart valve replacement this year oh my goodness so getting the word out is is you know that that big big need knowing that the audience that you're presenting to that's not where they usually think think about transportation you know the medical yeah. community they're just thinking about the solve uh, around the medical care so um so if there's 30 million people that may have the need um we flew collectively uh, last year, uh, around 35,000 flights. So there's a gap. <laughs> but what's also interesting, that's about 5,000 discrete families and 16,000 animals. And then there's conservation and education like STEM flights or EAA Young Eagles that, you know, give people exposure to aviation. Yeah. So something is a awry in terms of, you know, the how how many animal organizations seem to know about public benefit flying or charitable aviation, but how few medical organizations do. So um, one of the things that I'm doing this year as a project on building awareness is working with Rotary Clubs. So the International Fellowship of Flying Rotarians, which is a thing, which I yeah. didn't know about until last mm -hmm. year, um, has worked, it's partnered with the Air Care Alliance to come up with a presentation to give to all Rotary Clubs in the USA. Wow. And there's about 450,000 non-pilot Rotary Club members in the U.S. So that's an effort to build awareness in the non-pilot group. And the pilot group, um, I'm not sure we discussed this or not, but EAA is getting much more proactive. 
So this year at AirVenture, they made Saturday uh, Public Benefit Flying Day. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, they arranged for us to get several radio interviews during the week. Um, and our static display was under the tail of the C5A in Boeing Plaza. So everything walking through the C5A was funneled right into our static display. What so, perfect placement. Oh, my goodness. So the, the good news is that people are beginning to get you know, get the need and get, you know, think, get to thinking through how we're going to, you know, spread awareness into yeah. that community. Um, so it, it's fun. And, 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 you know, part of it's here, you know, thank you for having me because this yeah. is a great uh, forum to, uh, to get the word out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. If there, if there's a pilot watching today who hasn't thought about this kind of flying in the past, but wants to get involved, what would you tell them? Um, Number one, go to our, web, our website, aircarealliance.org. Um, there is a, a an area there where you can click on volunteer, and there's an application. Uh, the application will be pushed to regional volunteer organizations around you, so you don't have to do anything else. Uh, if you're a person that wants to request a mission, there's also a button for that. You fill out an application that will also get pushed automatically to the appropriate organizations. Um, we also offer a directory of organizations. So you can put in your state and you can see who's in your state that's a volunteer pilot organization as well. That's fantastic. Awesome. Mark, thank you so much for coming on Between Two Wings. I really appreciate it. Oh, great. Thanks so much for having me. Definitely. And thank you all so much for watching this episode of Between Two Wings. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.